what is Vanta Sargon of Akkad to be concerned with evidence, accuracy, and detail, I could not help but notice his colossal failure to live up to this reputation in a recent video he put out on his alternative channel, The Thinkery. One could surmise that this video was only half serious, yet serious or not, one cannot afford to abstain from clinging to the evidence as it best describes something. And thus it is with such lack of evidence that Sargon produced this video citing a tendentious and inaccurate article from the science section of The Telegraph written by one Sarah Knapton, a science editor who, by the lights of what she has written here, likely ought to be fired. The misleading title of the article reads as follows. Quote, Europe was the birthplace of mankind, not Africa, scientists find, end quote, and is followed by the following misinformation. Quote, the history of human evolution has been rewritten after scientists discovered that Europe was the birthplace of mankind, not Africa, end quote. And Sargon repeats this. You know, there's got to be a time when the Europeans stop stealing things from the black man. If it wasn't all of the ancient science and technology they developed that the European obviously stole from them, citation from Ghazi Kozo, then it's the very concept of man coming out of Africa in the first place. Europe was the birthplace of mankind and not Africa. Scientists find... Well, yeah, but these are going to be white scientists, aren't they? White Western scientists using the scientific method that doesn't even account for how a witch doctor calls down lightning. Well, it certainly is a shame that Sargon did not avail himself of the scientific method in researching this topic. Sargon is just a barrel of monkeys, isn't he? The subsequent bits of the article are rife with confusion and misdirection and portray a picture of solidified evidence and agreement that is far from the truth. The central problem with the article and Sargon's attachment to it is that both make use of blatant inaccuracies to promote a message, but Sargon's sin in this is his own failure to course correct, which is to say that in citing the article and using it as a tool to fight his so-called culture war, he neither investigated nor took the time to fact-check the article or correct its claims or the implications of its claims. What specifically is the issue at hand? The issue is the rather grandiose and constructed claim that Europe was the birthplace of mankind, i.e. modern anatomical humans. The discovery and subsequent tomographic analysis of a jawbone discovered in Greece in 1944 and a fossilized premolar in Bulgaria in 2012 do not offer any credible contravening evidence against the hitherto accepted out-of-Africa theory for modern Homo sapiens, precisely because these discoveries illuminate at best an alternative date of divergence for the earliest hominins from chimpanzees by several hundred thousand years, with one of the recent findings having been dated to 7.24 million years ago. There is an alternative article that presents the evidence more accurately, beginning with this title, quote, The oldest hominins could have lived in Europe, not Africa, claims new study, end quote. And this is followed by subsequent statements in the body of the article of a similar cautionary tone. It's actually a pretty controversial thing to say, and I expect there will be a major reaction to it, end quote. Paleoanthropologist Darren Curnow from the University of New South Wales, who wasn't involved in the research, told Science Alert, Curnow is quote-unquote convinced that they're onto something, but emphasizes that there's very little fossil evidence to go by here. We only have a jawbone and a tooth, and the researchers were only able to identify one physical feature focusing on the roots of the teeth. If we're going to accept the Eastern Mediterranean as the place where human lineage split from chimpanzees some 7 million years ago, we could do with finding more fossil samples. On top of that, to confirm that Grycopithecus was a hominin, we'd need to examine additional features, not just teeth. Quote, As always, we prefer to have more fossils, in particular, fossils that would tell us something about how Grycopithecus moved about. End quote. Began, who is another scientist working on this, told Science Alert. If it was a biped, that would seal the deal. Notice the appropriate tone of skepticism and caution with which the scientist described the discovery, and how greatly this distances itself from the tone and above all claims made by the Telegraph and Sargon. I think there is some general confusion as to what is going on here, and it's clear Sargon and many others do not understand human evolution. The findings do not in any way, shape, or form vitiate the currently accepted out-of-Africa theory for modern man, precisely because the fossils are not fossils of modern anatomical human beings, 
but far older hominins. Now, many people also seem confused about the distinction between hominid, hominin, and human. Hominids include the great apes such as gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees, as well as human ancestors such as Homo erectus, and modern humans. Hominins include only humans and our pre-human ancestors. Hence, one can say that all hominins are hominids, but not that all hominids are hominins. The hominin in question has been called Grycopithecus, or Greek ape, for its place of discovery. But it should now be clear why the original article from the Telegraph is misleading at best and intellectually dishonest at worst. Furthermore, there is no definitive evidence that these two fossils point to Europe being the birthplace of mankind. A. Because of the paucity of the fossil record, a fact admitted by one of the enthusiasts of the discovery, and B. Mankind refers to modern anatomical humans. And there's no fossil evidence to date that Homo sapiens was in fact birthed in Europe. There's also zero evidence that this particular hominin species is the direct ancestor of modern anatomical humans, or even if it survived past a certain period of time. The oldest fossil evidence for modern anatomical humans stems from Ethiopia and can be dated back to 195,000 years ago. And thus, the evidence for an out-of-Africa theory remains supported by current fossil findings and the fossil record. If these fossils had been of modern anatomical humans and had been dated to, say, 215,000 years ago, this would have been a truly incredible find. But they do neither. And as misleading as it is of the author of the article to claim Europe as the definitive birthplace of mankind, it is far more egregious for someone of Sargon's renown to simply repeat the inaccuracies of the article verbatim, which leads me to question his intellectual honesty, if I am frank, in a general sense, because he simply did not care enough to fact-check the article or the claims made by it. Unfortunately, it is doubtful he will do so, since human evolution and truth are not part of the grand culture war, nor do they lend themselves to waging said war. Rather, evidence and truth are something to be sacrificed for the sake of petty attempts to elicit laughter from an audience whose sole interest is in partaking in misbegotten humor. Shame on Sargon for fudging the truth to fit his agenda, but should any of us be surprised by this, this late into the game, when it comes to Sargon? So much for skepticism. And as is customary, links to the relevant video as well as articles are in the low bar. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.